Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Cook Along Live. I know it's been a minute since the last one. Uh, in fact, it's been just under a year. The last Cook Along Live was Memorial Day of 2021. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We did it outside in the patio. And uh, that's about when things started kind of opening up as far as like the COVID stuff. Uh, shelter in place got a little bit more relaxed. We were able to kind of go out and do things with masks, have a little bit more fun. And so uh, Cook Along Live takes up quite a bit of my time on the weekends, and I decided to take a little bit of a hiatus just to kind of get my bearings straight and figure out how I wanted to continue this show. Um, one of the reasons that I'm bringing it back is exactly two years ago I started this. And part of the reason was we were going into a pandemic, and I wasn't able to have friends or family over to... Uh, cook with me or enjoy my company and me enjoy their company. And um, the other part of it is I'm sure that uh, if you know me, uh, some of you have heard that uh, just a couple of weeks ago, my father passed away. Um, another reason that I put together these cooking streams was uh, really to kind of virtually hang out with him. And so uh, it was a lot of fun to have him be able to watch what I was doing, kind of participate with me. And um, it was a little bit sad to see him see him go totally unexpected very sudden um so i'm definitely gonna miss him however i figured that the best way to honor him if i can keep myself together while i'm talking about this is to uh continue this live stream and just make sure that um this is something that i do for the foreseeable future it is going to change slightly i don't necessarily know that it's going to be week on week every sunday um however what i'm going to endeavor to do is make sure that it is a regularly scheduled thing I've also built a website for it, cookalong.live. So if you go to your browser and you just type in cookalong and then a period and then a live, you'll go to a very food blog-esque website where up at the top it'll show like the latest six things that I've cooked or whatever. Uh, and then if you scroll down just a bit, you'll start seeing the most recent posts. I'm always going to post what's coming up at the very top. So if you go there right now and take a quick look, you'll see that the uh, fish tacos that we're making tonight are top of the top of the docket and um what i'll basically do is i'll put the link to the video on that page so that you can just click on it when we get started or the day of and then if you ever want to go back and look up ingredients or if you ever want to go back and find out the uh, instructions or equipment or whatever you need for that particular thing you'll be able to do that without having to come back to the video to watch the whole thing to get all of those instructions i've had uh, a lot of really good feedback on the show and a lot of constructive criticism that it's great that we post the ingredients, we post other things in the uh, description. However, we're not posting the instructions. So if somebody wants to go back and just really quickly throw something together, and they don't necessarily want to cook with a video going on the whole time. Um, it's difficult for them to kind of jump in and just make whatever it is that they're looking to make. So that's what the website's for. Um, I am structuring it similar to other food blog websites and, and kind of with all that three or four novels worth of stuff that most people probably don't want to read up at the top. However, I've also included links up at the top to jump straight down to the ingredients uh, instructions or the video. So if you guys want to just jump over all of that, um, feel free to. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge you for that. So let's go ahead and get started with our fish tacos. If you guys have any questions on YouTube, there is a chat, but it's under the video. So if you look on the video and you look kind of down in the lower right, if you scroll down just a little bit, you will, uh, you'll will you see the little video or the little chat box there and you guys are welcome to chat with me. You know, you can, uh, I guess, see on the stream over here, we've got the chat uh, going. And then as I kind of switch cameras, you'll see the chat jump around. Um, but that's the best way to interact with me through this because I can read what you're saying and reply or answer as I'm going. So let's go ahead and get started with our tacos. We're gonna start by preheating our oven. I want you guys to preheat your ovens to 375. So we'll get that going. And while we are preheating the oven, we're also going to prep our sheet tray. I've got a baking tray here, um, just a small one because it's just me here tonight. And I'm gonna grab some parchment paper. Do not use wax paper for this. Uh, wax paper is coated in wax, and as I'm sure you can imagine, you bake wax, it melts, and uh, it gets all over your food, and it's never fun. So grab a little bit of parchment paper. I like to kind of go the long ways, measure just about what I'll need, and tear it off. 
And we don't need any overlap with this one as far as the parchment paper is concerned. So what I'm going to do is just kind of make sure that it more or less covers the middle of the pan, which it does. And then you can absolutely cut off the end or just give it a nice little fold either way. Not going to make a big difference, whatever you decide to do. And we're good. So we've got our oven behind us, preheating, and we've got our parchment set up on the side here. So now that that is out of the way, that's the majority of the prep work. We're going to go ahead and start getting our um, pickled onions ready. So before we get our onion chopped, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a half a cup of water to our saucepan. We're also going to add a quarter cup of distilled white vinegar. And a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Make sure you give it a good mix, especially if it's settled, because that's where all the flavor is. There we go, about a quarter cup of that. If you don't have apple cider vinegar, you can use red wine vinegar. You can use any other kind of vinegar you want. Um, apple cider, I think, just gives it a nice kind of sweetness. And then we are also going to add a tablespoon and a half of agave syrup. You can use honey if you don't have agave syrup. I just uh, figure since this is a Mexican-inspired dish, we should stick with some of those ingredients. Go ahead and do a tablespoon and about a half. And we're going to want about a tablespoon and a half of salt. Since my tablespoon is now dirty, I'm going to do three teaspoons for the tablespoon. And double checking that I have the right measurement. There we go. And I'll set that over on the side. We're going to get this going at medium high heat. We want it to start simmering. We don't want a crazy rolling boil, so we are going to keep an eye on it. We just kind of want it to start bubbling and simmering and dissolving all of that salt and the agave syrup. So we'll give it a stir. Make sure that everything is kind of mixing together. And that salt will dissolve as the temperature comes up. So while we're waiting for that to come up to a boil, we are going to take our onion and we are just going to thinly slice it. Now you can absolutely use a mandolin for this. In fact, I, I toyed with the idea of pulling out my mandolin, but I also wanted to show you that it is possible to do it with a knife. And it's really just taking the onion and making sure that you cut it thin enough. We want very, very thin slices, about an eighth of an inch thin. They don't have to be perfect. They're a little bit thick. It's not a big deal. But we really want to do our best to get a nice, thin onion. Now, I am going to recommend that you put these things into a jar, like a canning jar or something else, where you can really kind of stuff a bunch of onions in there and, and get a lot of uh, good kind of packing going. I am going to put mine just back into this measuring cup because it's here. Make sure that you do a pretty good job of separating everything out. You don't want you don't want clumped onions. We're just going to kind of pack it in there. That should be a good number, good amount of onion. And then we'll just kind of clean off our cutting board as we go. Onion over there. And we're just really waiting for the uh, pickling liquid here to start simmering. So just keep kind of keeping it moving around, wait for it to start simmering. We're going to let it simmer for just about a minute. We just want to make sure that everything is going. And we can actually start with our spice mix for the fish. So I like to use a jam jar. This, I believe, was blackberry jam. Oop, and let's switch back over here since it's starting. Starting to roll, so I'm going to turn down the heat just until I get a simmer. And I really just want to kind of simmer it for just about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. 
you'll notice that all of that salt on the bottom has dissolved, and that's what you want. And we just want to let that go for just a little bit longer. And I'm going to say that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and just pause our burner. And we're going to take this and as carefully as we can, we're going to pour it into our uh, vessel with our onion. And I'm going to get some on the cutting board. That's fine. There we go. And then use a spoon. Just kind of make sure that these guys are as submerged as you can get them. They're going to want to float. <clears throat> so just get them kind of pushed under the brining fluid. Make sure you make a mess because that is the only way that you know that you're cooking. And we're just going to set these aside and let them cool off. It's going to take about a half hour for those to cool down, which coincidentally is going to be about the same amount of time it takes to get our fish cooked. So you'll notice that what we're doing over here is we are kind of multitasking. We are both getting our brine and our pickles and everything else done. And we're going to start kind of getting our fish prepared, and then we're going to make our cabbage. So that we're not spending a bunch of time just standing around not doing anything. This is a meal that you can put out pretty quick, as long as you kind of organize yourself and work in, kind of in, a, in a sequence that makes sense. When you have downtime over here, you start working on something over there, etc. So let's go ahead and get our spice mix measured. Again, I like to use these jam jars. I just use up all the jam. I think this was uh, blackberry. And then I just uh, clean off all of the exterior, all the labels, throw them through the washing machine, let it uh, sanitize, essentially. And then I have a nice little spice container that I can put a mix in, just shake it up to get it all uh, mixed. And then you don't have to worry about trying to like whisk it together or anything. So if it's a small amount of spice, this is fantastic. What we're going to do is we're going to start taking all kinds of spices. We're going to start with chili powder. Make sure it's not cayenne pepper. Chili powder is actually a mix of various peppers, and not I don't think any of them are all that spicy. They're all kind of mild peppers just for a really good chili flavor. And what we're going to do, we're going to wipe out our tablespoon with the agave. And we're going to start spooning up tablespoons of spices. By the way, all the ingredients for this recipe you can find at cookalong.live website. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pour out a tablespoon of chili powder. And a tablespoon of garlic powder. Granulated garlic also works. You can actually find these little packets in the uh, ethnic food aisle, and they usually are a lot cheaper than the larger, or the smaller, I should say, spice packets or spice containers. Little pro tip for you there. We'll also do a tablespoon of onion powder. And I just like to kind of roll these guys out into the tablespoon since the openings are pretty tiny. And I just get close. And there's a tablespoon of onion powder. I'm going to do a tablespoon of kosher salt. There we go. We want a teaspoon of cumin. Again. Spoon is too big to get in there. So I'm just going to roll this gently and try and kind of not overflow it too much. There we go. About a teaspoon of cumin. And then we're going to do a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I love the roasty flavor that it gives you and kind of that nice earthy smoked flavor that it gives you. But if you put in too much, it can can be a bit of overkill, so I like to just kind of do a smaller amount. Mm, that's close enough. There we go. Our spices are all put in here, so what we can do, I'm just going to close this thing up and shake it together. And this is how... Hey! Hey, how's it going, Ryan? 
get this all shaken up, and this is our spice mix for our fish tacos. So one thing that I'm going to do here, since I have a pre-made batch over here, I'm actually just going to mix the two together. They have the exact same ratios and everything. I just want to keep them all in one container. And this is another one that I like to use. Little Pyrex container, same thing. You just put on the lid, you can shake it up, get a nice spice mix. I'm going to set that aside for now. And we're going to take our pan here, we're going to set it out, and we're going to get our fish ready. I actually want to put this just up here while I prep my fish on the cutting board. So, what you want is a nice white fish, and I've got actually two different kinds here. I went out, they were having a pretty cool sale on both tilapia and cod. I like both. I think they're both amazing. They work really, really well for fish tacos. So I'm going to come in here and grab a nice tilapia filet here. Oops, that is a gigantic tilapia filet. Let's do this. I'll grab this one for tonight. And that one will be for tomorrow. And yes, I do apologize. I know that tonight's Cook Along Live was... I shouldn't say it was thrown together at the last minute because I've been thinking about it for about a month. And with uh, all everything else that was going on in my world, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for it. So the tester was made earlier today for lunch. It was delicious. And uh, I'm going to endeavor to post the ingredients at least a week before so that people have time to go and grab uh, what they need before the show. Let's go ahead and do this. So here is some rock cod. I'm going to get one of the more red pieces of it, one of the more red fillets, just to show you that it's still a white fish. It just may not look like a white fish. So the tilapia is on the left, the uh, rock cod is on the right. Go ahead and toss those back in there. You can see that they look very different. The tilapia is a lot more uh, kind of meaty, and the rock cod is a little bit more kind of, I don't want to say slimy, but that's, that's what's going through my head while I'm kind of messing around with it. Now, what I want you to do is you're going to see that there are like these little lines. Let me go ahead and do this. You're going to see that there are, ooh, that is overblown. Hmm. Well, I'll play around with that later. I can see that you guys can see these little white ribs. If you move your hands up and down these ribs, you may feel some bones. So I like to kind of go around the middle. I like to go along the top. And then you're going to see that there are some lighter ribs down here. I can actually feel a bone right here, actually two, and they're poking out. So what I want to do is actually remove these two bones. If you want to be a total food nerd, and I can actually feel three, if you want to be a total food nerd, what you should have in your kitchen is just a set of pliers that are specifically for pulling out these pin bones. If you have a nice set of nails, you can actually just clamp down on them and yank them out yourself. Or you can just cut off that section of the fish and not worry about it. I don't like doing that because then you lose a little bit of the meat. So I like to actually just pull them out if I can. Then I just do the same thing to the other side just to see if there's anything that's like an obvious uh, huge bone. Because it's not fun when you're biting into a taco and you get a bone in the roof of the mouth. Because I've had that happen to me. And then do the same thing with the tilapia. We're just going to go back and forth, check it. I'm not feeling any bones there. And I'm not feeling any bones on that side either. All right, cool. Now, these fillets do, I mean, the tilapia anyway, it does look a little bit mangled. It looks like somebody kind of cut it in half there and uh, wouldn't be something that I would necessarily want to serve on a uh, nice plate. But for our fish tacos, it's going to be great. So what we're going to want to do with these is we're going to want to place them on our sheet pan. Hey, Mom, what's up? Ooh, tilapia is good, mulch. It's a very, very neutral fish. And if you're wondering why I'm calling Ryan Mulge, he's my best friend for, I don't know, 
30 something years. Um, and that's one of his online nicknames, Molnir. So we got our tilapia, we got our rock cod. We are going to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil. It can be extra virgin, it can be regular, it doesn't matter. We're not going super high heat with these, so either will be fine. We're just going to go ahead and do a little drizzle there, a little drizzle here. I'm just going to use my left hand to kind of rub it in, get some good coating. And we're going to flip these guys over and coat the other side as well. This is going to help, number one, cook the fish, and number two, help our spice seasoning adhere. Go ahead and just do that. Give it a nice little dip in some of the extra. Uh -huh. And same thing with this one. Nice little dip in some of the extra. And we'll get it a nice coating. Perfect. Now, we're going to take our spice mix, our seasoning. I'm just going to take a teaspoon, nice little scoop, and we're going to generously kind of season over the top. This is one way to do it. The easier way for me is to actually just do what I do with salt, pinch it, and sprinkle it. I like doing this. It works a little bit nicer for me, but you guys do you. And we're going to flip it, and we are going to spice up the reverse side as well. Make sure when you are seasoning these, you have your hands at least 12 inches off of whatever you're seasoning. It gives you a much more even spread. And it does take a little bit of practice to really be happy with your handiwork. Cool. We got our fish seasoned, ready to go. These are going to go into our oven. For about 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right. There we go. So, let me grab this. We'll open the oven door and we will toss this bad boy in there on the center rack. We have this thing preheating up to 375. It's preheated, so we're good to go. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. I will be right back. I don't have the sink cam set up today. Again, got a couple of things going on in my world, so I'm not 100% uh, prepped with all my camera gear. But I promise we will be back in full swing very soon. All right. Yikes. Cool. So now that we got our fish cooking, we got about 20 minutes. What we are going to do, we're going to make our nice creamy mayo sauce. And actually take this, set it aside. We're going to make sure that we label this so that we know what it is. Because I have Bloody Mary mix. I have actual taco, like beef taco seasoning or chicken taco seasoning. I've got this uh, fish taco seasoning. So there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of things that look exactly the same in my pantry. So I'm going to make sure that I label that. For our uh, creamy dressing, just grab a small bowl. doesn't have to be huge or anything. We're going to want to grab some uh, mayonnaise. We're going to want to grab sour cream sriracha. And let's go ahead and get these going. Mayo, sour cream. Yikes. You don't have to use sriracha. If you don't like sriracha and you want to use tapatio, go for it. If you want to use Cholula, that's fine. It doesn't matter what you use. Just make sure that it's a sauce you like. Heck, if you want to use some of the hot one sauces because you want to ruin somebody's day, fine by me. I'm not eating your tacos. You are. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a half cup of mayonnaise. Still got some spices on here, so I'll just kind of sweep them off. Give you a nice... And I just like to spoon the mayonnaise out of the carton, or the container, into the cup, into the half cup. And just like with the spices, you know, 
get as close as you can, but it's not the end of the world if you have a little bit too much or not enough. You may actually prefer it that way. There we go. Give it a nice little wipe in. Get as much of this off as we can. And I don't know why I just did that to clean out the spoon, because I'm going to scoop it right back out of the cup. There we go. Half a cup of mayo. I know, it's terribly disappointing that you can't watch me wash my hands. I, I totally understand. I apologize. I can't have a conversation with the camera while I'm doing it. I'm sure you're all heartbroken. And we're going to use a third of a cup of sour cream. And remember, you can, you can play around with these ratios. If you want it to be a little bit more tangy, add a little bit more sour cream and a little bit less mayonnaise. Maybe reverse them. Do a half a cup of sour cream and a, a third of a cup of mayo. There we go. I get about a third of a cup. That's close enough for me. Just scoop that in. Like so. Now we will put this back in the fridge. Here's you there. And... All right, we want to get a clove of garlic in here and about two tablespoons of lime juice. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more tart, you can always go for a lemon, not a Meyer lemon, but like a normal lemon from a store. Um, you'll get a lot more acid from the lemon, so it'll make it a little bit more uh, sharp, a little bit more acidic. I'm just going to go for the lime. I do like the sweetness that it brings. So actually, in this case, a Meyer lemon might work. Pretty well. I use a reamer. You can absolutely use anything you'd like to juice your lime. And I don't know why that is so overblown, because I had the color corrected before I started, and I turned off the auto color balance. So I'm going to have to dive into that and figure out what's causing that. So I do apologize if the color is a little bit blown out here, but I will have it fixed for the next stream. And we'll do the same thing. That was about a tablespoon. Here's our second tablespoon. The lime juice is really what's going to thin this out. So make sure you add enough, otherwise you're going to have a pretty thick sauce. If it's still too thick after you add about two tablespoons of lime juice, you can add more lime juice or just add a little bit of water to thin it out a bit, get a, get a consistency that you're looking for. All right, so there's that. We also want a clove of garlic. So let me grab one of those. Easiest way to clean skin off of a garlic, just take your knife, give it a little love tap. It'll kind of split the skin, and then you can just peel it right off. Should come off pretty easy. If it doesn't, just give it another love tap, and your skin will come right off of your garlic. That is the easiest way I've found pop skin off of garlic, and then the easiest way to grate garlic, or um, garlic press, like press garlic, take your knife, make sure that your handle is not going to hit the cutting board, just smash down on the garlic, collect it towards the center, give it a nice cross cut, like so. Pile it up. We'll do one more cut this way. And then we're going to mash it against the cutting board. Want a little bit of salt, not much, just a nice little pinch, about enough to kind of mix in with the garlic. But I don't want to add a huge amount of salty flavor to this. I'm going to take my knife, the edge away from me, three fingers on the flat of the blade, and I'm just going to crush it down against the board and mash it. This takes a little bit more time on the cutting board 
mash it. However, I don't have to clean a garlic press when I'm done. So it actually saves me quite a bit of time in the long run. I hate those garlic presses. There we go. Plus, I can control the consistency a little bit better. If I actually want larger chunks of garlic, I can stop a little bit earlier. So we go with a nice garlic paste, which is perfect. Go ahead and add that to our mayo. Now take this over to the sink and set it aside. And we'll get that scooped in. And what else do we need? The hot sauce. My sriracha is in my pantry. So give me just a second to grab. <laughs> Adding the sriracha or whatever hot sauce you're using is actually 100% up to your own personal taste. If you want it to be super spicy, add more sauce. If you want it to just have like a hint of that sauce flavor, don't add as much. Add just enough. I'm going to give this just a quick mix before I get the sriracha in there. If you use a whisk, it'll come together a little quicker. You guys can't see anything in that camera. That's annoying. All right. It's actually annoying me enough to go grab a mouse and play around with this. Two seconds while I fix this. Do -do -do. What is wrong with you? Why did this go up to 80 something? I want you to be 25. There we go. That's better. Now you guys can actually see what's going on. No, these limes are not from my new tree. I do have, uh, I do have a lime tree in my backyard. However, I have not gotten any limes. It's still a brand new tree, so it's about as it's about as tall as I am. Uh, it's a it's a short tree. It's uh, just a baby. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon ish of sriracha. I do like a little bit of spice in my sauce. Get that mixed through. We'll see that this is now becoming much more of a kind of a cream sauce. A little bit more. Ori than uh, mayonnaise is or sour cream is. There we go. Viscous. More viscous. Less viscous? I don't know. Whichever one is more pori. Now, you can absolutely add a little bit of an additional, uh, like a, a, a couple of leaves of cilantro just to give it a little bit of extra flavor if you'd like. Not necessary and really depends on what the people who are eating it are going to want. I made the mistake of adding cilantro to the batch that I made earlier. You can see, well, maybe you can't see. Can you see? Those little green flecks in there are the little cilantro leaves. <clears throat> so I do have a little bit of cilantro, but not enough. And then just if you pour it into one of these little squeezy bottles and get it all over your cutting board, because that is a requirement when you're pouring into a bottle. Just makes it super easy to keep it mixed and to add it to your tacos. There we go. And that's uh, combining both the mix from earlier as well as the one that I just made. Yuck. Next time, use a funnel. You won't have to worry about this. That's kind of the charm of doing these cook-alongs live. You get to see all the little screw-ups. I think it makes it fun. There we go. And the only reason I attempted that was because when I did it earlier, it worked perfectly. <laughs> so, sometimes in the kitchen, things do not repeat themselves. All right. So I've got all those in a little pour squeeze bottle. I can just use my finger to cap it, shake it up. And I've got a nice little squeezer for 
um, my chipotle mayo. It's not really chipotle mayo, it's just like a spicy mayo. All right, time for our cabbage slaw. I'm going to move my pickling liquid off of the burner. Mm. And I'm just going to test. It's not hot anymore. The benefits of using an induction range. And I'm going to put a nice big bowl over here just to sit there. And I'm not cooking it. I just want it there. And I'm going to grab a couple of heads of cabbage. A little bit of cilantro. <clears throat> And I'll go back for a carrot in just a second. <clears throat> so as I mentioned earlier, I made my tester version of these fish tacos. So I'm just going to use the what's left of the half that I did not use earlier. And this is really up to how many people you think you're going to be serving. If you just have yourself, you really only need like a quarter of each and probably not even that much. If you have a, a larger group, maybe use a full half head or even a full head, uh, depending on you know how many people you're planning on feeding. We're gonna take these and, and kind of dice them up or slice them up really, really thin. If you want, again, uh, like we did with our onions, you're welcome to use a mandolin, but I just wanna show you that you can absolutely do this with a nice sharp knife. Now what I like to do, these are kind of half circles, right? And every, piece is fairly long and, and kind of a half circle. So if I cut this even thin, I've got a lot of like really long stringy pieces of cabbage. Not a bad thing. I like the crunch on it. However, you can also cut almost all the way down to the root and give yourself a little bit of a head start on making these smaller. I don't want to cut it all the way in half, but, you know, pretty close. And then I want to cut these very, very thin. I'm going to take my time. Hey, Siri, how much time is left on the timer? I forgot to set the timer. That's fun. We're just going to come through and cut these guys super, super thin. There's our purple cabbage. We'll add it to our bowl. We're going to do the exact same thing with our green cabbage. I've got a little scavenger dog moving around at my feet, looking for free handouts, little pieces that have dropped off. Doing my best not to drop him too much. And same thing. Cut this right down the middle, almost down to the stalk. The stalk actually helps to kind of keep it together. And then I'm just going to dice this, or I guess slice it, really thin. Now you see we have lots of little itty bitty pieces of cabbage, as opposed to a ton of very long stringy pieces of cabbage. It makes it just a little bit easier um, to kind of mix and to put onto a taco, uh, etc. So switch back over here, get these into our bowl. Now I like to kind of mix as I go, just so I can see what the um, distribution is, how much purple to, uh, to uh, green I have, et cetera, et cetera. So here I can see that I've got a little bit more, let me turn it this way, you can see that there's a little bit more purple in there than there is green. So I'm gonna chop up just a little bit more green to try and keep it even. I'm getting fairly close to the end here, so I'm just gonna maybe make one more or two more cuts before my fingers get too close to the blade for my liking. And I'm gonna just flatten it like that. Now I've got a much longer bit of cabbage that I can chop across. And then I can just do that and that and have some snacks for me. Put those into the bowl. And get this into the bowl. Okay. <laughs> Carrot time. <clears throat> Grab a medium carrot. 
It's about that big. And we're going to go ahead and just skin it. Laying it flat against the surface and just kind of letting the healer do the work. Super easy. All you have to do is rotate the carrot. There we are. Now I'm going to take off the root end. I'm going to cut it about two inches. And then I'll give this little piece to my dog. There you go. And now what I want to do with these is cut off one end and then the other end so that I have two flat sides that I can kind of lay this down on. And from here, I'm going to cut very thin planks with my knife. There we go. I'm gonna lay these guys flat in a little stack. And then I am going to, again, chop them very thin. I wanna keep them in these matchstick shape. I wanna keep them julienned. But I want them to be very, very thin so that they mix in with the cabbage. So right now, since you guys uh, heard that I totally forgot to set my timer, I am going based on the aroma coming from the oven. So I can smell that the fish tacos are cooking. But I'm going to guess I probably have another seven or eight minutes to go. I'm going to go give them a quick peek in just a second once I'm done with the carrots here. There we go. Again, I'm going to lay them into flat planks. I'm going to cut these as thin as I can. And then we're just going to... Eeks. Chop through. There we go. Again, we're going to switch over here. I'm going to kind of give everything a mix and just see what the distribution looks like of carrot to cabbage. That actually looks pretty good. I like that. You don't have to add the carrot if you don't want to, but I think it gives it. Just a little bit of a sweetness flavor. A little bit of an extra sweetness. There we go. That looks good. All right, back to our overhead shot. I'm going to set these little snacks aside. And I'm going to grab our jalapeno. There we are. Jalapeno, we're going to just take off the top. We're going to cut it in half. Like so. And then we're going to remove the ribs, or the pith, and all of the seeds. I don't want this to add really any heat to my coleslaw. I just want that uh, jalapeno flavor. So by removing the pith, which is actually where uh, a lot of the capsaicin is, it's not the seeds, it's actually that center spongy mass. The seeds just happen to be attached to it. This should give me a lot of jalapeno flavor with not very much jalapeno heat. Yeah, mold, I love love chopping things. I, I got really good at it over a long period of time. So these guys here, I'm going to start by cutting them very, very thin. And we're gonna dice these guys up, but I wanna start with a very thin long slice, like so. I'm going to add this whole jalapeno. Need to sharpen my knives because cutting against the board 
not working very well, so I'll just use the tip. There we go. So I'm going to turn it 90 degrees, just make sure everything's broken up. And then here, just going to give it a nice fine dice. Really, it's just rocking the knife on its point, back and forth, back and forth, and moving it up against the flat of my knuckle with my fingers kind of curled backwards a little bit to hold everything in place. It's very, very difficult to cut yourself this way unless you have a pinky sticking out or a thumb that kind of, you know, moves forward. And you can work pretty quickly. There we go. Get all of this <clears throat> mixed in as well. Do, 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 do. All right, give it one more mix. Take a quick look at the distribution. Looks pretty good. Now, again, you can absolutely add a little bit of cilantro to this. I actually recommend it at this point, but it really depends on who is eating it. If there are people in your um, group of people who are coming over for dinner, or if you don't like cilantro or whatever, don't add any. Um, that should go without saying, but uh, if you do like cilantro, by all means, go ahead and add it. I am going to actually add it to my slaw. Just making sure I didn't miss anything. I think we're good. Cool. So, I already took it out. With the cilantro, I like to kind of go through and just pop off the, la the leaves. If I'm just adding or chopping something up for like a sauce, you don't have to. The stems and everything are just fine. They're, they're actually very easy to crunch down on and eat. But I want, the, I want to be able to see the leaves. You're not going to really be able to see the stems. So I just kind of grab the tops of the cilantro. If I have a little bit more time, I'll actually pull out individual stalks and just kind of strip the leaves off of them. You, you really don't have to. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do here, just for presentation, because as we all know, if it looks good, it will taste better. I'm just going to pinch off some longer strands of cilantro. And we are going to keep these for when we build our tacos. Do, 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 do. Should be good. Let's go check on our fish real quick. Ooh, that is looking really good. I'm going to go ahead and turn the broiler on for the last couple of minutes here while I chop up my cilantro. And getting the cilantro cut up is really pretty simple. And it's even easier if you have all these leaves, because you can just kind of stack the leaves on top of each other, like so. Doesn't have to be perfect order or anything. Just get them more or less flat on top of each other. And then all you have to really do is roll them into a little bunch, almost like you're rolling a cigar. And we only want to chop this cilantro a couple of times because it bruises very, very easily. So got that, same thing. We're going to keep our knuckles forward. We're going to keep our fingers rolled back. And we're going to chop it as thinly as we are comfortable with one way. And then we're not going to move this bundle. We're just going to kind of leave it there. Go 90 degrees. Point to the knife under our little uh, knuckle creases. And we're just going to rock it up and down. Across. So we're getting a nice dice. Don't overwork your cilantro. Don't overwork basil. Very delicate herbs. And bruise them pretty quick. We're going to get that mixed in with our coleslaw. And we are pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and take this, give it a little mix. I want to add just about a tablespoon of lime juice. 
You don't have to. Just like to kind of squeeze in a half a lime. Give it a little toss. Good enough. And then we're going to put in about a tablespoon of our taco sauce. And give that a mix. I don't like adding too much of the taco sauce. I like this to be a little bit drier. Obviously, you dress it, but I like it to be a little bit on the lighter end of being dressed. And then I like to add a little bit of extra dressing at the end to each taco. There we go. Nice, lightly dressed coleslaw. If you want to add a little bit more, you absolutely can. Mm, give it a taste. I'll give it a little, just a little more. Not very much. All right. <clears throat> That looks beautiful. Set this on the side. Clean off our work surface here. Give our hands a rinse. We'll pull our tacos out. All right, so. Grabbing our tacos or grabbing our fish. Oops, not that. Get the broiler off. Look at these guys. Ooh, yeah. Switch over here and give you a look. These guys look phenomenal. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these guys up at the top of my cutting board here. Just let them chill. On my burner, I'm going to grab a pan. I'm going to set it to medium high. I'm going to grab a corn or a flour tortilla, whatever your preference is. I'm going to start with a corn. We're going to give this a toast. We want this at medium high because we want it to toast quickly. Just grabbing one of each type of tortilla. Give you a little demo of what each one looks like. Just holding my hand over. Test and see if it's warm yet. And this is what we're starting with. We've got a corn tortilla. We've got a flour tortilla. We're going to toast them both. And then we're going to build our tacos. Now, as far as the fish is concerned, be careful because that pan is still hot. But you can use a fish spatula or a spoon or just your fingers if you feel uh, up to the task. If you've got asbestos fingers like uh, some of us who do a lot more cooking do. I can also just use a fork and we can just kind of pop this up off of the parchment paper. The parchment paper should keep the fish from sticking. And you can just kind of pull it off like so. It doesn't matter if this stays intact because we're going to kind of be shredding it down as we're plating up our tacos. Now remember this is the tilapia because it had that uh, separation in the center. And our rock cod, there's half of it. And here comes the other half. Is that piece right there. So we got our tilapia, rock cod. I'll make the corn with the rock cod. I'll make the uh, flour with the tilapia. Just a bigger piece of fish. We're just gonna take these guys in here Take just a second to press it down. It'll take a little bit of time for the heat to kind of come through the tortilla. So we got a little bit of time to be able to kind of press it down. Give it a sec. You might see a little wisps of smoke come out. Does the bruising affect the flavor? Yes. If it starts bruising, you're going to start getting that kind of um, acrid flavor that uh, some of the... Like, have you ever, have you ever bit into a, a bruised apple and it gets a little bit more mealy and it tastes a little bit more sweet? Um, aside from the texture being off with herbs, if you bruise them, they actually start tasting a little bit bitter. So it's not, not the best. Go ahead and just give this a quick flip. Absolutely use a, a fork so you don't burn yourself. 
And you don't have to like get brown on this, but you do want to see that it's dried out. You want to get it nice and toasty. You might see it start to kind of bubble up a little bit. Got some little air pockets. That's perfect. And that smoke is also just fine. It's just moisture coming out. Let me give this one more flip. But just another 10 seconds or so on that side. And then we'll plate up our taco. There we go. So now you can see on this side, I've got a little bit of blisters. That's what I'm looking for. Two flips is fine. Now I'm going to flip it back over. Here's the blistered side and the normal side. I'm going to turn off my hot plate for just a second. And we're going to go with the rock cod. So what I like to do, the way that I like to plate these up, is I like to take my sauce, just make sure it's mixed. I like to put a little line right down the middle, just to kind of pre-season it. Then I'll take my fish, and I'll just kind of shred it up just a bit, something like that. The reason I do this is because then I can actually form a straight line with it. And then I will place this right over that dressing line. And especially with corn tortillas, you want to be very careful that you don't overload the tortilla because you can put a ton of stuff on here and just like blast this um, with way too much stuff. So, a couple of things. I am actually going to add a couple of slices of avocado. My favorite way of doing avocado, just I'll set that in the pan and probably cook while we're doing this. I put it down on the cutting board. And then I'll make one cut down until I hit the seed. I can't go all the way through because there's a huge pit in there. There's a huge seed. And then I'll just kind of roll the avocado over around the knife like so until I get all the way back to where I started. Now I can just take this and kind of turn it 90 degrees and it just lifts off. Now, if you have a nice ripe avocado, you should be able to cut it into a quarter, something like this. And then the skin it just peel right off. If it's overripe, of course, it's going to be super mushy and probably not work very well. But if it's really nicely ripe, that's exactly what will happen. You'll get a nice quarter of an avocado uh, with no skin on it. I'm going to cut a couple of thin slices of avocado and put those down first. Just kind of like that. And maybe a little bit of the edge to kind of fill in that little void there. Perfect. Now, I'm going to grab, let's see, a little spoonful of my coleslaw. And we're going to top it with that. Just like that. Perfect. Now we're going to grab just a few pickled onions. By this point, they should be cooled. Maybe not cold, but they'll be like room temperature, which is fine. And they're nice and pickled, and they look amazing. Add one or two more here. And you absolutely want to kind of zhuzh this up and make it look pretty. Because I am a firm believer that the better something looks, the better it tastes. I mean, I could just pile this all on and make it look like a pile of garbage, and it'll probably taste fine, but it's not going to have that appeal. It's not going to have that initial wow where you're like, oh my god, I really want to eat that taco. So, we'll get this kind of built up like this. <clears throat> I like to add a couple of more things. If you saved some of your cilantro leaves... Just do something like that. I have some queso fresco. You can also use, actually this is cotija, cotija. These are very similar to queso fresco. It's just a little bit more dry. I'm going to take it. I'm going to crumble it and just sprinkle it over the top like so. Set that aside. And then last, 
but certainly not least, little bit of additional sauce. And I've got a cilantro bit stuck in there, so just give it another shake. Come on, cilantro, go away. You were working so nice earlier. Why you have to be mad? Problem is, I'm going to squeeze this, and it's just going to go all over the taco. I don't want that to happen. All right. All right. You win. We'll clean that out. Give it another shot. There we go. And it goes anyway. Anyway, that is a beautifully built, very full fish taco. I'll go ahead and give you guys a little preview of what that looks like. Beautiful taco. And of course, we got to go for the all important taste test. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is what you want. Mm. Now, this is a corn tortilla. It's a street taco sized corn tortilla, so it's small. <clears throat> the flour tortilla that I have over here. <laughs> it's quite a bit bigger. So if you're looking for like here's the here's the corn one versus the flour one. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more robust and maybe you like larger tacos and you really want to stuff it with stuff, I would go for the for the flour or find a bigger corn tortilla if you if you can. But either way, you're gonna be happy. These things are so delicious. Take another bite. Mm hmm. Now, should go without saying, <clears throat> if you are cooking for a group of friends or family, and you are greedily eating your tacos over your serving surface, people are probably going to be a little bit grossed out. The only reason I'm doing this is because it's only me tonight. I'm just cooking for myself. The cutting board is fine. I'm going to wash it off and sanitize it afterwards. So I don't care. I'm not going to get myself sick. But if you are cooking for other people, it might be nice to keep the fish out. Maybe uh, cut it into portions, like per taco. Uh, or let people just kind of mash them up themselves, break them up themselves. And then they can set their own tacos up. Of course, have a plate to you know kind of build the taco on. And then go and sit down and have a good night. Now, I usually would make guacamole, salsa. We've done that on this channel like a thousand times before. So rather than make you guys sit through uh, another hour of just doing guacamole and salsa. If you go back in this channel, one video back, uh, I believe I that was the tutorial that I did for one of my local uh, Young Professionals networks. So if you want to know how to make a beautiful guacamole and a beautiful salsa, go back one video, watch those. And uh, otherwise, go visit me on cookalong.live. It's a website. Open up your browser, type in cookalong.live. It should take you to that website. All the ingredients, the recipe, and um, the equipment list should be there. Follow me on Instagram, cookalong.live, uh, and also uh, on Facebook. I think it's cookalong live stream, all one word. Sucks because not it's not cookalong live everywhere, unfortunately. But we'll see what I can do about that. Anyway, everybody, this is what I got. This is what we did. It's been two years since I started this, back when the pandemic was starting to get up. Uh, I took a little bit of a hiatus, like I said at the beginning of this video, so I do apologize for that. But, uh, you know, things were opening back up after a little over a year of not being able to go do anything. So it was a little bit exciting to get out and, and uh, do some fun stuff. So this should be a more regular thing. Check cookalong.live for upcoming recipes. I'll also post those on the Instagram and the Facebooks and all that information, all, the, all those spots. So go follow me. Like, subscribe, share, etc. I'd really like to build this channel up. Um, Going from this channel here, which is my Rob Sogamonian channel, which is mostly aviation stuff. I have a new YouTube channel for Cook Along Live. Um, I will be posting that link 
uh, very shortly. Uh, if you go and search for Cook Along Live, I believe I'm the only one that shows up, and it's a uh, an icon of some tacos. So it's pretty pretty easy to find me. But go look go look me up, um, and I'll have that information up on the website as soon as I as soon as I can. Again, just kind of getting things out there for this uh, kind of a soft reboot, if you will. So hope you guys have a great evening. It's been fun. Love chatting with you. Love hanging out with you and, and cooking with you. So we'll talk to you all later next week on the next Cook Along Live. Bye.